Are you ready to automate construction? My name is Jared Gross and I travel around to the most innovative construction projects in the world, interviewing experts and CEOs responsible for these great achievements. Recently, I created my own startup to help people find jobs in the construction automation industry. So if you're looking to work with this kind of technology or looking to hire people involved, reach out at the Human Robot Army link below. In this video, I get the incredible opportunity to visit 20 added manufacturing and work with their system hands-on with two of their most experienced operators, Jim and Ray. We get to see a printing strategy different from anything we've ever seen before on this channel. You might notice something new about this printer. They've got a spool holding up a rod of fiberglass fiber which is going to be inserted during the print to increase the tensile strength with one continuous bead of fiberglass throughout the entire segment that's being printed. Right now they're running a dry layer test so that they can ensure the print path is good and you're not going to reach any limits of the joints. And after a successful dry layer test, we'll start up the material system and get the print going. This is totally cutting edge R&D, and we didn't get to see the fiber being printed in this scenario, but now let's jump to the design that I got to print. One object was based on the LiDAR scan of a tree trunk, and the other was just a simple circle. Before the print, you check yep, the orientation good. of the printer by setting all of the points to zero and then checking if the lines align. So you can see the line on this side here matches up with this point when you look at it straight on, and so that means it's properly calibrated. Each joint has a similar line on both sides and when you have all six joints lined up you're about ready to do a dry layer test. The mixer might not look like fun but it's actually the most important part of the job. You've got to make sure all the water and materials are flowing properly not to mention a thorough cleaning. He was just explaining to me how the pendant works and this is a custom user interface that they set up with the ABB robotic arm to control the additions that they made including the pendant control of the pump the ability to move the pump forward and also the valve which is able to shut off the flow or turn it back on again allowing you the start stop function on the printer then you have your pump speed in hertz because they have a variable flow drive they can control their pump speed uh, and your roving control so we'll get to see some roving in the first print hopefully we'll see how that goes we're at 20 additive manufacturing and they've been teaching me how to operate their printer giving me incredible access to their wealth of knowledge and now we're going to be operating the printer doing three prints. Uh, one that's going on the corner of their building, which we used a LiDAR scan to create, and two more that are smaller pots that will uh, just give us a, some more practice working with the printer, having multiple systems on one print bed. So we got the computer plugged in, we got all the power plugged in, we got the, this is the pump power, right? And then this is the dry mix auger. Yep. The driving, the motor power, yep. okay. And we got a sponge ball in here so that when we put the water into the hose, or this isn't water, this is always... Uh, that's the water, that'll just be clean that's water. That's the water input? Output. Output. That's the clean out that's water. Clean out. So, okay, we're able to clean out the hose before we print, make sure there's no sediment in it, which we did already? Yeah, we don't have to clean it again. No, okay. you clean it at, the, at, at the end of the print. Process. It's a much easier startup process than another system that I operated where you had to manually do incremental twisting. So now the material is very dry. Yeah, but give it a minute. The water. It's usually like this when it first starts. Now it's starting to look much better. Before we have the hose attached, it's much easier to judge the changes that our adjustments make. After we have everything attached, we have to wait until yards of material get through the hose to see our changes reflected. Okay, power. And then right away, hop to your water supply there. More, 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 more. Whoa. That's the right flow. Slightly more. Okay, let's stop. At this point, we have the hose plugged in. We're just waiting for the material to work its way all the way through the hose. We can confirm its printability at the extruder point. And then PP to main from the pendant production window and get going. Before you start printing, you want to give it some back pressure so that you make sure the hose doesn't have any air pockets in it. Then you can kind of simulate the motion of each layer to ensure that it's buildable and each layer will support the next. And so what we're printing here is 
the base of a tree, which we scanned with a LiDAR scanner, to attach to the corner of the building of the 20 additive manufacturing headquarters. And Jim modeled this up to fit perfectly the tree that's outside with no base. And by using the real tree, we'll get something that looks reminiscent of that uh, to put outside their headquarters. It's really cool that you can just use your phone to scan things and then print them out in reality. All kinds of things are gonna be possible through automation and more people than ever are learning how to use this equipment and implement it in ways we haven't seen before. Today, Twenty was teaching me how to use their mixer system, get it started up, and also their pendant. And it's been really incredible learning from Jim and Ray the processes that Twenty uses to achieve the feat of concrete printing. If you take a really close look, you can see this laticrete material is forming each layer, and the layers are supporting themselves with no formwork whatsoever. Eliminating the need for formwork is incredible because assembling formwork is labor intensive, taking the formwork apart is labor intensive, and the whole process can now be done with automation. It just requires a little human input and some R&D. So there's always different challenges implementing new technologies, but the team here at 20 is doing an incredible job coming up with new solutions all the time. Printing smaller okay. objects is okay. substantially yeah. no, more difficult because the material has less time to start setting uh, until before the next layer comes around. So uh, this is a more challenging feat than this print potentially, uh, even though it's much smaller and looks much simpler. Looks Here's good. the heads up display from the 20 system. This is a custom developed. They got the pump on off to control the mixer pump system. They have pump forward or backward. You can reverse the flow. And then they have this great pinch valve, which allows them to start and stop the flow of the material preventing them from having to clean up the material dripping along the way. You can also control the pump speed in Hertz, the roving speed, and then this is a different type of mixer pump system. They make adjustments all the time because they're able to make customizations to this user interface. Then you have the standard speed adjustments, and that's what I was dealing with earlier with Jim. He was calling out either faster or slower that, so that we can get the right bead size for our print. Then you have the production window, and this is where you have the steps that the printer takes. You can see it moving through step by step by step, reaching each individual point that makes up the system. All right, now we can go back to the production window. PP domain turns the system on. And all right, so I'll turn the pump off, go to the production window. Oh, uh, leave, the pump running. leave the pump running. Okay, production window, PP domain, and play. Now that the print is done, it's time for the most important part of the job. Cleaning your equipment is how you keep your investment safe for the long term and make sure your equipment will last for years to come. You have to take everything apart, make sure you get all of the cement out of the hose and anything that was touching wet cement needs to be washed down with water or scrubbed thoroughly. How do I twist it? Just give it a pull straight out. Give it a wiggle as you pull it straight out. Yep, like that. Give it a go, it's almost there. All right. It's too bad there's no kind of chemical bath you could just dump this stuff in and take care of it. And the other one is, okay, there you go. A little softer. Yep. Now you can pull that guy off. You need to put that whole assembly in the wash pit there. Yep. Yep, one thing at a time. Put feet on the board. Lefty Lucy. Sometimes it doesn't want to go. Might have to pull a little bit while you're doing it. All right. What happens when I pull this? You watch toes. Okay, now just give that guy a little kick there. There you go. Okay. This plug prevents water from going back into the system where the dry concrete and cement powder is. 
if the water gets in there, it's a big mess. If it hardens, then you have to basically go in there with a chisel to clean it out. So we're going to put some grease on the side of this to help lubricate the edge, seal it up a little bit. And even with all of this, we're still going to avoid having any kind of water pressure directly on the perimeter of the cat. Avoid getting any grease on the surface. It's unnecessary. This seal will uh, do just fine. If you watch this video, you're obviously super interested in learning how to use this equipment. You can check out my course at the link in the description for a four-hour lecture series, or listen to my podcast 100% free. 3D CP Guru GPT available too.